I'm Scott Allen Miller. It is the 3rd of September 2022. Today is Saturday and this morning we are getting up and heading out to here, the lovely city of Matagalpa, Nicaragua. And it is exciting to be able to be filming here uh, because I don't get a lot of chance to come out and film in other cities. So today, or I mean, I, I'm going to be getting a lot more chance to do that, but it's just been so much going on for the past year that we've been uh, really just in Leon most of the time. And one of the things I love about Matagalpa is the rivers that flow all through town. This is a mountain town. I'm gonna to head over to the other side and show you that as well, how the river comes through town, because this is totally different than how rivers come through in say Granada, Leon or Managua. Up here in the mountains, you get a lot more really heavy flooding and a lot more of these kind of fresh streams that come through all of the time. And so it's a very different uh, feel than you get in a lot of areas. And I'm kind of looking to see where I wanna walk because I don't know the city really well. Um, I've done a lot of walking, but there's still, it's a difficult city to get to know. The lay of the land is kind of tough and it's actually a good sized city. But so today is the beginning, of, well, it's the beginning of the weekend of the uh, corn fair. I keep saying festival, it's actually a fair, um, or so they call it, I mean, what's the difference? Um, up here in Madagalpa. So we're bringing the family up to go to that. And we've been looking forward to this for some time. So uh, this morning we got up and got everyone ready and we really should have been out the door by about 7.30. We didn't get out until nine and that was a little bit of a problem. Problem. So we were hoping to catch the direct minibus that goes from, uh, I'm going past what appears to be a tiny church here. So I'll just grab that as I go by. Uh, you can see the, 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 lots of really small churches in this town. Everything in Madagalpa is a totally different vibe than you would get in Sea Leon, uh, which we'll talk about in just a little bit. I'm going to spin the camera around though and look at this really cool at the end of the street. So I'm on a very flat street that I've been walking down, but look how rapidly it goes up the mountain in front of me. That is a stairway instead of a road. And those are houses, just one on top of another. And I love that about Madagalpa. This is such a, what I always call a 3D city. Everything from basically anywhere in the city, you're either looking up at or looking down on different parts of the city. And the architecture is totally different than what you've seen in other parts of Nicaragua, because this is not a colonial city. Okay, so moving on, we did not make it in time to get the minibus this morning because they're so Leon to Matagalpa is not a very popular route. There's not a ton of people doing that throughout the day. So we uh, missed the early bus and uh, could not get a direct mini. So we spent some time at the <laughs> I spent some time at the bus station trying to figure out what to do. They tried to get us on one of the big buses. And honestly, I think the chicken bus would have been the way to go. But uh, Dominica was really worried about the girls and her with motion sickness on the big bus because they're school buses, right? They're not like luxury buses. And um, look at this Steffi beautiful beauty salon. Like you get some really fancy modern stuff in Madagalpa that you don't see the same kind of thing in Leon. Um, and uh, so, so we avoided the chicken bus. We finally told, we talked to some people and they told us just take the Esteli minibus instead and then get off at um, Empalma, which is very confusing. First of all, it's a very hard word to hear. Empalma? What, what did you say there? We're gonna, this word, Empalma? That was probably backwards. Empalma? Um, it it's, turns out, so I'm gonna say this right away because I don't want anyone who watches this to be confused. Everyone says Empalma, but that does not show up on the map. The place that they mean to get off at is San Isidro, uh, which is near Sabaco in Matagalpa Departmento. And so that is, that's where you need to get off the bus. And yes, if you're on Google Maps and you're there, there is a condition under which it will say Empalma, but it is very difficult to have that happen. So so just be aware, it's San Isidro, it's the, it, the T in the road, where the road from Leon hits the Pan American Highway, that's where you have to get off. And no, there's not a bus stop, you just get off on the side of the road, there might be a guy selling chairs there, in the right in the lane, um, just hop off, stand under the big tree, and uh, from there, and so we did that, uh, but it took quite a while to get that organized, uh, but, it, but that was fine, and the minibus was very comfortable. Uh, the girls had the whole front row, so they had plenty of space, no issues whatsoever, uh, and then I sat behind them, which it doesn't bother me at all. Like, I don't mind any of the seating arrangements in, in the minibuses. Now hop over to the other side of the road because uh, of the sun. Madagalpa is a lot cooler than Leon, but it gets a lot of direct sun because we're up in the mountains. Uh, so that was, it was a comfortable ride. We got a lot of snacks on the bus, which was fun. 
because um, the girls, there's a lot of things that they don't normally try. And uh, so the guy came up and we're like, yes, yeah, snacks. So we got tons of yuca chips. We got lots of enchiladitas. Uh, we managed to get a whole bunch of the pan de queso, the cheesy bread um some other things and it was it was a lot of fun the girls i think really enjoyed that and we got cold water and everything as the girls came by uh selling that stuff on the bus so they got to experience because this is their first time doing the mini bus dominic and i do it quite a bit i do it constantly uh, but the girls have not done it yet so we were really worried about how they were going to handle it and everything and it was fine and and luciana's like yeah other than the mayhem of getting onto the bus the bus is great like there was it was comfy they had their ipads like they had plenty of space it was warm that was about it and they had the window open blowing on the whole time and they liked the whole snack thing liesel it turns out really likes the enchiladitas when they're fresh and good like they are at uh the bus station the ones on the street aren't normally as good i think they make those in the morning and then sell them all day but at the bus station they're making them constantly because there's so many being sold so she really liked those and i enjoy them much more when getting them there uh, and all of us, the yuca chips we got were fantastic, which I mean, yuca chips are yuca chips, right? But these were fresh and just perfectly cooked and very thin. There's good yuca chips. Uh, so we had those. I really like the pan de queso. I was excited. Luchana thought she was going to really like it. Liesel thought she wouldn't. Um, none of them liked the pan de queso at all. So I bought a whole bunch of it and it's now all mine. I'm the only one who likes it at all, but that's okay. <laughs> But that's part of the fun, is trying all these different foods that you don't see anywhere else um, and then eating them on the bus because it's a whole like, what are you going to do? You're on the bus, you have nothing to do. Trying new foods is a fun thing. So at least for me, it makes the whole thing just that much more of an adventure and exploration. But the girls did like that. They had fun uh, at that point. Then it was about two hours, I think, to get to San Isidro. Very comfortable. You just It's just a big highway from Leon to, to Sabaco. Um, and then when we hopped off, that was a little bit scary. Not scary like dangerous things are going to happen. Just you're in the middle of nowhere. San Isidro is a very empty area. At least there's one big tree that gives you shade. Um, so we stood under that tree and uh, we tried to talk to the guys that were there and, and watch what other people were doing. But there was only a couple people doing the, the transfer to Matagalpa because this is only four people who have missed uh, the other the, the better bus. So it's not a very popular thing to do. Uh, so we got off and we stood under the tree and then we saw the Madagalpa bus come by and we're like, yes. And then I reach out and I'm like, yeah, yeah, get the bus. And the guy's like, no, down there. And there was a bus stop way down, but we couldn't see it. No one told us about it. So it was, it was just out of sight. Like, I guess if you knew to look for it, knew it was, you know, about how far away it was, you would spot it. But without knowing it was there, it didn't occur to us that there was one down there and it's such a weird spot. And that's where they stopped and I couldn't get everyone down there fast enough uh, because we would have had to have just picked up and run uh, at that moment to be able to make it and that did not happen so we did not make that bus but at least we knew where it was going and that it came by and we're on the Pan American so there's a lot of traffic so we walked down there stood in the bus stop and it takes about 25 minutes between the buses and the bus we're waiting for is the Esteli to Matagalpa bus uh, so it's not a it's not a super popular run but it does go more than twice an hour so uh, we simply waited there and several Managua buses came by while we were waiting. And it's good to know that the, what those options are. Like if you were stuck in this area, you could choose between a number of different places to go uh, simply by knowing which buses come by, which is normal. That's how those things work. I'm coming past uh, one of the big markets here in town, um, really close to downtown. And this is, this is not here every day. I don't know much about the, the <laughs> Matagalpa markets, but this is a big one that's right here on the street. And there's been a lot of people out here shopping today. Uh, so, and I'm actually filming this on Sunday, just in case you're watching this and wondering when these markets pop up or whatever. Uh, so we stood there and the, the girls were definitely not super happy with the complications of the travel and the having to sit and wait outside. I think had we caught that first bus, they'd have been very happy. They'd have been like, oh, we made it. That was no big deal. And, and that was pretty easy. But having to wait for 25 minutes well, really, we waited for about five to 10 minutes, missed the bus, then had to walk, then had to wait 25 minutes, wondering how long it was between buses. That didn't go over great. So that could have been smoother, but other than that, and now knowing how it works, honestly, it's not that bad at all. 
So we caught the chicken bus there, very, very cheap. Those buses are the super cheapest, uh, and headed um, on to Madagalpa. And that only took him another half an hour. So Luciana calculated the whole thing is about three hours and five minutes, three hours and 10 minutes. And that was the total um, travel time for the day. Really not bad considering how much of the country we're crossing and going from the coast up into the mountains and, and all of that. So it was, uh, Overall, I think very successful as travel days go, given a day where we couldn't know what was going to happen or how it worked. I'm going to turn the camera around. This is the Estrella Express that I'm going to talk about later on in the episode. It's just, it's a, it's just a super mini, um, but they have this great seating, and you can't necessarily see it, but over there, they're seating out front, and then they're seating out front here, um, and they have a good selection of food in there. And... Uh, so, so they got us to Madagalpa and everything went really smoothly. Now, while we were on the chicken bus, Dominica was supposed to be booking our hotel on booking.com for the uh, Hostel Buena Onda um, because it's a friend of Carla's that owns the place and everybody says it's really great. So we were gonna go there. That did not work out. She, uh, I guess she forgot to do that um, or thought that they just didn't need to because we were so close. Um, and it, who knows if anything was available. But we got into town, got a taxi, went to the Buena Onda and they were sold out which was not ideal. Now, hold on, I'm gonna show. This building, I remember in like 2018 at least, we were looking at this building and following its construction online. And as you can see, there is absolutely nothing done. That has been an empty shell for half a decade at this point. And they still have the for sale signs on it, but unfortunately these new, new construction projects that happened during the current economy completely collapsed and uh, there's just nothing. So that, that sucks. That was supposed to be the hot new place to have in Madagalpa. It was gonna be like really expensive office spaces, uh, which is why we were looking at it because we were really interested in the residential or office offerings because it's right downtown and it's the tallest building in town and they never got a single floor of it completed, which really sucks. I'm kind of in the road there. I'm also gonna show you, this is, so this is the corn fair. This is where it begins. And uh, it's not nearly as busy today on Sunday when I'm recording this, but I'm gonna walk through and film some of this because this is, this is kind of cool. Hopefully it doesn't get too loud that you guys can't hear me because this is super loud where I am. So I'm gonna try to get past some of this before I continue talking for the day. Hopefully we can edit out some of that music or we may have to do something because that is obviously. So on Saturday night when we were here, there were thousands of people out here. I'm gonna take a moment and film some of this and we'll be back. All right, we are back and I just did a walk around filming of stuff at the fair. Lots of interesting looking stuff. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun when the kids come down. And uh, so our hotel was full or the hotel we intended to use was full and we had to uh <laughs> oh someone wanting to say hi on the camera Hola. <laughs> and uh we um asked there and they said oh go up to the hotel uh biscano and uh i'm like oh that that sounds kind of familiar so we walked a little ways ended up there and it turns out that is the same hotel there's only two of them that the one here that we're staying in and they had rooms uh, and actually it worked out perfectly. They had a really comfortable room uh, with three beds and uh, very quiet location. We're, we're very happy with it. Uh, it is one that I actually showed their Leon location on one of my episodes in Leon, obviously, uh, when I did the walk around of the, of the uh, Parque uh, Arlen uh, see you. Uh, so if you find that one where I went to the barrio and did a whole barrio walk looking at houses, it's a long one. It's in that barrio mixed in with everything. I'll try to link that if I remember uh, so you can find it from here. But it's just, it was really interesting that we ended up at that. And it's such a bit of a coincidence that it's one of the ones that's walking distance from our house deep in Sutiava, very, very remote. I am currently walking back to the hotel to pick everyone up. They were in the midst of snacking and relaxing and charging devices and stuff while I'm out filming today. So uh, we got into the hotel, we relaxed for just a little bit, 
got dropped off all of our stuff and then uh, I talked to Carla she gave me some recommendations for dinner uh, we looked at a bunch of different things but ended up going to and I hope I get this right it's La Bella y la Vida maybe that's wrong but I'll try to link it uh, but it's a uh, very hidden away Italian restaurant uh, on a little walking street um, not very far away here in downtown Matagalpa uh, and it turned out to be a beautiful location we enjoyed the food service was good uh, but the location and the the ambiance were really excellent it's one of those places that has a garden room and a room that overlooks the garden and an upper balcony all on a, on a little pedestrian back street like really interesting well done little place good menu uh dominica got the vegetarian carbonara which was that we all felt that that was the winner for the day it was quite good um i got uh lutron and i both got uh espinaca ravioli uh she got hers with pesto because she has learned that she loves pesto uh, although she said mine at home is much better and uh although i get it from a can so i can't really take very much credit but i heat mine up better and uh, uh liesel just got regular spaghetti i got the espinaca but with the uh creme de hongos uh, uh, mushroom cr cream sauce uh, but Dominica's was definitely the piece de resistance of the dinner I would recommend that if you're going to be going there uh, carbonara is good normally but it's hard to get one that doesn't have bacon in it because by definition it has bacon uh, but just recently I had one that was salmon in Managua in Tequantepe uh, and that was really good after dinner uh, they were pretty much done we did want to get ice cream so we did some walking there was a dos pinos ice cream place nearby uh, but that they, they didn't have too big of a selection and we can get that at home from the grocery store so there's not a lot of reason to go to one of those we were hoping to find some place with sorbet for liesel so because they were not there um, we uh, we decided to go check out a sorbet ria that we saw on the map and of course google maps is wrong in the place does not exist and never did probably by the way just as i'm walking i'm going to turn the camera this is la buena onda that i'm coming past right now just as i'm mentioning it and this is this is them here i'll get a little bit this is i'm told a very nice place highly recommended great location really beautiful but sold out so I'll, I'll keep the camera going this way. You've seen enough of me. Let's see some of Madagalpa today. Uh, and this is the path we walked um, minutes before on the video where I was saying where we went. Okay, so uh, we went down. We didn't find that. On the way, as we were searching around town, uh, Dominica kept stopping into pharmacies, to pharmacias, uh, in order to try to find uh, a lactate uh, because Liesel is lact lactose intolerant, and that's why we need a sorbet. Oh, more. Hola! <laughs> And uh, uh, since we, we didn't find the sorbet area, uh, we were going to have to get ice cream. So she needed uh, a lactate uh, enzyme in order to be able to do that. So it took about four stops, but we did manage to find it. Uh, so this is an important experiment for us to see if we can find good medicine that uh, is going to work for her. And uh, at some point, I'm hoping to do a walk down this street for you guys, because this is a seriously baller neighborhood down this direction past the Restaurante Pescomar. Here, I'm gonna have a bus go by, but past this restaurant up the street has some amazing houses that we saw last night. And uh, and the Italian restaurant is right here. This, if you see this stretch, actually, let's take you there because this is such a great restaurant. If you're gonna be here in Madagal, but you should know where this is. So look for the Frida Kahlo painting at the Coqueta store. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. And, uh, and then you come past this white wall with this Sorfita SA. This is, to the best of my knowledge, this is like a financial services consulting firm. And it's a cute little area here. And then this is the pedestrian way, right in the middle. I mean, there's a car in it right now. That's because of delivery. But this is it. And you come down here. And some of these are houses. But if you can see up in the middle of the street, right about the midway point, there are lights strung across the top. And on the left, which I think is the south, is a hotel. And on the right is the Italian restaurant. And I think the hotel may have its own restaurant as well. And I think they're actually um, owned by the same place, I think. Uh, but I don't know. I don't know what you can do to be able to eat at the upper deck up there. But it's really cool. But this, where the motorcycle is, is the Italian restaurant here that we came to for dinner. And we'll get the name as we walk by so we know for sure what it is. I had it backwards. I had the right name, but not in the right order. Hola.
And that is where we had dinner. And so we will take you from the restaurant back to the hotel. But so we found the medicine. So we're very excited uh, for Lisa to try the medicine that she's not been able to get before um, and see if it works because she really likes ice cream. She just has not been able to eat it for a long time um, and lots of other uh, dairy products. So we got that and we walked on and found Kiss Me, which we knew was here. And believe it or not, seven years ago, we came to Madagalpa looking for a Kiss Me because we heard that they were really good and we had not managed to find them in Leon when we were there seven years ago. And we, and I'm not sure the order of which city we came to first but in both cities we struggled to be able to find them and never managed to but we had looked around quite a bit and ended up at a festival which there's some slight chance that the festival we ended up at seven years ago was this uh, corn festival that year but i don't think unless the weekends were totally different we don't think that this is the right weekend so we think it was a different festival that just happened to be huge and in the exact same place and looked the same i don't know <laughs> i i think there's a pretty good chance we were actually here for the corn festival but we don't know uh, but we did not manage to find Kiss Me then because of that. But this time we did find Kiss Me. We went in and all the girls got ice cream. I did not. Uh, they had no flavors. That sounded interesting to me, which is weird. They don't have a huge selection. They always have high quality ice cream, but they only have a few flavors because they hand make them. And you can only have so many. Uh, and, and it was all way too much like coffee and, and passion fruit. Things that I just don't tend to like in ice cream, um, but perfect for the girls because they all like that stuff. So they enjoyed their ice cream. Um, I did not get anything. And after that, we walked back to the hotel where we're headed now on the video. Uh, and they were pretty much done. It was about 6, 6.30 and Lisa and Luciana just went to bed and they were out. They were out long before seven. Like that was their night. Dominica um, didn't want to go anywhere. She was like worn out. From the day but she wasn't like tired and ready to sleep so she always has something to read so she just read uh for the evening and as always i'm ready to go out and do things so i headed out and went for a many mile walk exploring the city it was dark of course so i didn't do any filming i didn't bring the camera <sighs> well that's nice and loud on the video he's gonna have that in a second maybe start the car dude start the car Okay, so I went for a many mile walk. I went to the Northern Barrio, which I believe is San Martin. And I walked all through that and up into the Colonia north of there and like way out into the country, just walked and walked. And it was the most beautiful walk. I really enjoyed it. Lots of mountain climbing. You can see what it looks like to the north. I was out heading, I think that's, nope, that's the wrong way. <laughs> so this way, this is the hill that I was climbing that big one there and I didn't go to the top obviously but I was going up that as I hiked and just an amazing walk and the roads up there are all brand new there's I, I walked it so far out into the country that I couldn't believe how remote I was and yet I still was on perfectly maintained uh, paver roads with really frequent LED street lights it was it was absolutely awesome how well it was all maintained <laughs> and uh, um, I found like some amazing housing out there, like really expensive baller housing um, and all kinds of different complexes and like little communities with small houses and huge modern mansions and all kinds of stuff that we don't find in Leon or Granada because we're colonial cities. But Managua being, or Madagalpa not being a colonial city is able to build anything that makes sense. And so it, even though it's a smaller city than Leon and tiny bit bigger than Granada, it gives so much of a feeling of being such a, so much a larger, more vibrant city um, with so many more options just because housing is so much less constrained. You're able to do any number of things simply based off of what makes sense rather than uh, maintaining an aesthetic, which I appreciate how much Leon and Granada are living museums and that is very important uh, to the country and they make those cities really unique. But uh, there are such huge parts of the population um, in the country that it really doesn't leave all that much for everyone to have more normal uh, housing and options um, that are often, you know, there's a reason why people prefer to build that way now. It costs less, you get more. We're, we're you know, based around air conditioning today, like things are just different. Uh, so here in Madagalpa, you get a lot of that stuff. And even though the city is not uh, a super rich city, it is an okay city, it's a middling city. 
um, and it's a fair size but not the biggest, uh, you get a lot of resources and things that you don't get in other cities uh, because of that. So it's, it's really nice. So this walk was fantastic. I had such a good time uh, doing it and uh, ended up with um, just such uh, good exercise and exploring and finding areas I had no idea existed. I really didn't have a good feel for that portion of the city and, and really had no idea how much the city sprawled to the north, which was really interesting that there's uh, so much more to it. You kind of, I think most visitors to the city, including locals who come here, don't really have a feel for how sprawling it is as a city. Um, in Leon, we, we sprawl pretty far, but it's, it's the barrios are very flat and small. Um, and, and it's just kind of like a, the feeling of villages connected one right after another, rather than being a deep city with multi-story buildings and, and tight living and municipal or urban services. And I think that's maybe the best way to think of it is Metagalpa gives so much more of an urbane feeling as you go around the city uh, compared to a Leon because of that colonial thing. Leon is obviously the bigger city overall. Uh, but so that northern walk was just fantastic. Um, I did that until pretty late. And then uh, about 9.30, I returned to downtown. I stopped at the uh, Estrella Express, which I showed and mentioned on the video a few minutes ago. Uh, I stopped there and just got a Gatorade and they had these donuts that looked fantastic. And I'm like, oh, I'm totally getting one of those donuts. And uh, it was completely awful, really on the verge of unedible. It was more like two dry hamburger buns that were way, way, way too thick and uh, with uh, you know a little bit of pudding in the middle and they just slapped them together. It's like the pudding was meant to be a glue to hold two stale hamburger buns together, except it was like 10 times the size of what a hamburger bun should be. It was just, it was not good at all. The icing on top was good, but that was it. Nothing else about it was good in any way. Not the pudding, not the bread, nothing. Uh, <laughs> but it looked good, so I was very tempted. So anyway, I ate there and then I walked downtown and discovered where the festival was. So I stopped in and found thousands and thousands of people at an outdoor concert and they were having such a good time. But unfortunately it was about 9.30, 9.45 when I got there. And so it was just wrapping up. They finished everything at 10 and I had to uh, get out of there. Right? I mean, they weren't completely kicking people out, but they did send a message that said, you know, it's, it's time to go back to your houses. And they turned off the, the sound and they made all the vendors pack up and stuff. And uh, so that was unfortunate that I really got to see so little, but at least I got to see the crowd of people, tons of people out dancing. Um, I do want to show this. This is just such a neat, whatever it is. I think this is honestly a house, but I can't tell, you can never be sure. But big gate, they have this huge stairway and then they have this building and some buildings behind. It could be a school, it could be anything. You never know in Matagalpa, really in Nicaragua in general, but I love in Matagalpa that it has these layers of things. I think that is actually a church. I think I see the church behind now but it's weird because i'm filming this on sunday morning when you would expect things to be open maybe this is the back side of a church but you can see a little bit just how much the road goes up all of a sudden and uh, i actually walked to that this morning before filming this but it makes for such a dynamic city there's just so much going on and you can see so far so those neighborhoods have in some ways they're so disconnected because of the hill to here but in other ways they're so connected because you can see each other in a way you wouldn't normally be able to see uh and it's just and then that's there's a river uh that goes around town uh, the big one is is uh kind of obviously called the rio grande um but and that wraps around town you can see the edge of town where you can kind of estimate where it goes and a lot of really cool stuff is built along the river and unlike in leon where the rivers are kind of nasty uh this one is is much larger and pretty clean uh and makes for quite a lovely waterfront so a lot of neat stuff is is done along that and i hope i get a chance to film that but i don't know if i will on this particular trip Okay, that covered a lot of bases. I got to the thing, I walked around the festival. I did have the closest I've ever come to a street fight, I would say, happened during the festival. A homeless drunk guy uh, kind of aggressively tried to, to uh, talk to me, I guess, and I told him no, and I walked away, and he didn't like that I was walking away, and he grabbed me with his buddies, and I turned on him, and I said, back off, quite strongly and he wasn't going to back off he got angry that i told him to let go of me 
And we were in a crowd of people. The whole crowd turns around. There's police everywhere. His friends immediately were like, we're out of here and just left him. And then he thought better of it and walked away. But he was he was really strangely aggressive. And I have no idea why, because he was just a drunk guy in a carnival. But, and he was, it wasn't like doing anything. He was just a drunk guy who really wanted to grab me out of a crowd for no known reason. No idea what he wanted. I didn't have a camera or anything. It was just me walking through, looking at what food was available, which was not much because they were closed. Uh, so that then from there, I decided it was still only 10 o'clock. I wanted to do something. So I stopped by, uh, I think it's uh, Tatito's. It is a just, just a local bar that I walked past, grabbed a beer, but even they were closing up. Um, they were dancing when I got there, but they only went till about 10.30 rather than 10. So it was not much later. And uh, uh, did that, uh, had one beer and then said, you know, I just need to get some sleep and I'm not going to uh, find much of anything now that the festival's done because town is kind of wrapping up and I don't know where to go and I was honestly pretty tired having walked for several miles. So I headed back to the Hotel Biscayno, uh and called it a night, went to bed, uh, did take a shower uh, and then went to bed to get ready for the adventures today. So that was our Saturday um, and it was a really cool day here in Medigal. But I love this city, I really do. This is one of my favorites that I've been to in Central America excuse me, Central America. It is a really, you know, the weather is so nice. There's so much cool housing and neighborhood options. Um, the cost of living is really, really good. The weather is so much cooler than Leon and Granada that you get um, the wonderful components of Nicaraguan culture uh, without the, the a, a oppressive heat. It's still a very warm city. You, you got to be understand we are still in Nicaragua. There is no cold city in Nicaragua, but compared to many, uh, it is very reasonable. You get a nice breeze. You get lots of rain up here. Uh, it's a lot cleaner than some of the other cities. They have really serious fines for littering in this town. I noticed up to 50,000 Cordoba. And if you do so from a vehicle, they can impound your car if you litter from a vehicle. So that's, that's stuff that we don't have in Leon. It would make a really big difference. But um, overall, I just really enjoy this city. I'm always happy when I'm here. I, uh, I think it's, it's one of the, the often overlooked jewels of the region. <sighs> Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. Put your comments below. Buy me a coffee if you like. I'm trying to remember to leave that link. My father always looks and says, you didn't put in your link. Uh, and look forward to more from Madagalpa tomorrow. And I will see you then.